Both the U.S. and China have a lot to gain with cultural exchanges, and among those who follow the trend is Elizabeth Harrington. She's the North American publisher of the Who Run Report. Well, it's very interesting, Elaine. There have really been two big phases in the internationalization of education in China. Going back to the 1990s, when the first group of students started coming to the U.S., they were really university students and PhDs, and they were sent by the Chinese government to modernize China, to create the Industrial Revolution in China. The new generation of students coming over are really here to help China go global. They are here to learn the best technical skills, the best Western management styles, and then, frankly, the growth and the opportunities in China are enormous because it's a very big market, and it's growing 6 percent a year. So there's huge incentive for them to go home and participate in the growth of the Chinese market, but then also help China go global. Well, talk to us more about some of those incentives and the growing lure of going back home. Is it more with business, and are you seeing it more with the entrepreneurs? Yes, definitely, Elaine. It's really two things. Let, let me address the government incentives first, then I'll come back and talk about entrepreneurship, which is very important. Uh, the Chinese government has literally set up systems to provide incentives to both Chinese and Western students coming back to China. The incentives uh, include everything from office space to work in, support from the Chinese government to get different kinds of uh, business permits that you need in China. Very importantly, it includes tax breaks and tax incentives, and in some cases, they will even give you land. So there are very, big, very big economic incentives for the students to come back, and they wouldn't get those incentives in the United States. Well, Elizabeth, China has long been called one of the biggest exporters of brain power. Now it seems that there's this reverse trend of foreign experts going to China to research, to work, especially when it comes to science. Yes, that's exactly right. In the early 90s, people would come to the U.S. to study, and then they would go back to China. They were called sea turtles. Now we call the young students sea gulls, because what they do is they grow up in China, they come to the U.S. to study, to learn the best of Western management, and then they go back to China, but they go back and forth, so they go global. And what the Chinese really call this is not the brain drain, but the brain circulation. So these young seagulls will be born and raised in China, educated in the U.S., and then go back and forth from the universities in China and companies in the U.S. and China to really help China go global. And the focus is very much on entrepreneurship. What about visas and visa reform on the logistical front, having to get a permit to live and work? What changes have you noticed in China and other countries over the last several years? Well, the Chinese government really just recently changed the visa system about a year ago. So first of all, you can get a 10-year visa to come to the United States to study. It makes it easier for students to come here, and the U.S. government has accepted that also. But then for uh, foreign students who want to go back to China to work, they can now get a 10-year visa also. And again, when they go back in special economic zones like Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Shanghai, there are actually government offices and programs that will help foreigners uh, set up an entrepreneurial business in China. So the government is really doing everything it can to not only attract people back, but to help them be successful when they get to China. Elizabeth Harrington, thank you so much for your perspective. We appreciate your time. You're very welcome.